I'm TC. I teach geography at the National University of Singapore and I've been doing so since the late 1990s. I live in a bungalow which has been around since the 1950s. Can you imagine? So it's a 70-year-old house. It's a 30,000 square feet bungalow with a garden. And this is a place that we call home since the early 70s. My uncle, who was an architect, did some fundamental changes to the house. But actually, since the 70s, the footprint of the home has remained pretty much the same. I live in this house with my parents, also with our wonderful domestic helpers and two beagles. One is called Summer, the older beagle is called Bingo. Very often I will think of a room in terms of the theme, you know, reddish, brown, yellow, so that's the colour theme. But the other way of thinking about what the room looks like would be sort of things that fill the room. So very often I would describe it a very Asian room, Asian fabrics, Asian furniture or Asian inspired decoration which reflect our background, our interests, where we travel and who we are. One of the more interesting things in this room is this four elephant trunk table, which is from either Cambodia or Laos. A lot of the rugs I've gotten from different parts of the world. The rug that is behind you, I got, I think the Grand Bazaar, Istanbul. Another rug which is not far away from where you are, this is a Tibetan rug, which I got actually in Singapore. And you know, people know that I'm interested in fabrics and rugs. So actually another rug just behind me was gotten by a colleague and I think she had travelled to somewhere in the Middle East. No, it's always a collection of things that I'm interested in and people add on to the collection as they travel and they know what I'm interested in. Yeah, actually this is also from Istanbul. So yeah, things from all parts of the world. I would say one of my favourite memories growing up in the home actually doesn't have to do with interiors. It has to do with playing with my cousins and my brothers and we did all kinds of things, right? And of course the home became a natural environment for all these shenanigans that we got up to. Enacting movie roles, pretending the home is a hotel with checking in and checking out and so forth. Lots of games using the home as a backdrop in many ways. Those are the memories that really, you know, stick with me about this home. I suppose the dining room is an open concept. Even before we actually even spoke about tropical architecture, my uncle redesigning the home in the 70s already conceived of the idea of an open architectural sort of form. So the living room has two aspects, right? So one side faces the garden, the other side faces the indoor garden. So in a way, birds fly through, squirrels run through the setting room. So it's always been really, really open. There's no air conditioning. So that's a room that we also entertain in and lots of fun, fabric and including a tapestry. So my wing of the home has three different rooms and in, again, I decided that maybe different colours would distinguish the rooms. So my study is a study in blue and white. So for the fun of it, I call it the blue and white chinoiserie room. Not that there's much china in it, but nevertheless. The bedroom, I always feel it's important to have a calmer, soothing colour. So green, the colour of earth, the colour of nature. So that room is the botanical room in a way. And the final room, which I hardly go to, but I use it occasionally as a study or it is a guest room. I decided that if it's a room that you don't go in much, why not go crazy with it? So, you know, having lots and lots of prints of flowers, particularly British or English botanical prints. So all the postcards that you see, basically I've acquired them. Embarrassingly, it's all in a single trip to England. So I picked up all these botanical prints, but in a way, it will always remind me of the summer spent in England, looking at all these colourful English prints of nature and birds. a very easy way to add life to any environment is through colours. I think we have to remember would be texture, the feel of a fabric or a feel of a rug. And a rug doesn't have to be a fabric cloth rug, it could be a rattan rug. Uh, so something tactile, I think it really brings life to a, an environment. So you have colours on the one hand and you have texture on the other hand. And 
the room really becomes very, very vibrant. Even if you may not have the sound of people talking or music in the air or birds out in the garden chirping away, the room already comes alive through colour and through texture. I always feel that it's important to buy something back from a place that you visit. So the sense of place of a different country, of a different culture and also of a different time becomes so much stronger. I always like to bring back some kind of fabric which can be used for as a table runner, sewn into a cushion cover or hung up on a wall as a tapestry. So to me, a room really comes alive when you introduce natural features like plants and flowers and how wonderful to be living in Singapore. You have access to all these. A second thing I cannot live without are books. Books about countries, about architecture, interiors and how appropriate that in this COVID period you are indeed able to travel across the world and to different parts of history as well with books. So books really are introduction to the world. The third thing I really can't live without in the context of home would be fabrics, cloth from different parts of the world. Again, it's entirely possible to match a Cambodian tapestry with something from Africa and perhaps a mat that you get from another part of Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm.